I was looking at one of our tomato plants just the other day and noticed this here, this deposit, is actually bug excrement, otherwise known as frass. That's a really good indicator or sign that you've got some kind of infestation. The other thing I noticed is this little pinhole up here. I just recently learned at the Master Gardener Mini College that that is a possible sign that you've got, hey chickens, you've got a stem borer that could actually be basically a snorkel or a breathing tube for your stem dwelling larva or caterpillar. Um, as they move up the stem of your plant, whether you've got a vine borer and a squash plant, or in this case a stem borer and a tomato plant, uh, they'll need a way to breathe, and so that's one of the mechanisms they have for doing that. So what I'm going to try to do, I believe that's the topmost breathing hole I think I saw. I'm going to try to extract this stem borer um, using basically a box cutter or X-Acto knife and some tweezers. I'm going to disinfect everything just by wiping it down with some rubbing alcohol. I don't want to go super deep, so I'm just leaving the little tip of my box cutter exposed. I've got my thinnest tweezers handy here and we'll see if we can get a stem borer out of the tomato plant. Okay, I'm gonna follow this ridge in the stem. You're in my way. Trying to force the stem apart with my tweezers here. See if we can get a view as to what's going on in there. Not yet. Let's cut a little bit more. The other thing I've got to say is I've got some tomato teeth, which is basically a light Velcro that I'll be applying to try to patch this up. I'm hoping that we caught this early enough in the season that uh, we can get this tomato to recover. This is a Prudence Purple, grown from saved seed from last year. And how are we gonna be able to spread this tomato vine apart? I'm gonna go a little bit higher since my air hole, that, well, I think what is my air hole is up there. this open. You can see the stem's pretty pithy and hollow. And the last time I did this last year, what I noticed is as I was prying the stem open, I basically saw movement. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So you think it could be further up? I'm going to go a little bit further up. Obviously there's some risk to doing that, but the frass is a pretty unequivocal sign that you've got someone living in here, and generally speaking, we don't want anyone living in our tomato plants, so. See if I see any other breathing tubes. And if the frass was coming out the bottom, I don't think they're going to move down into waste. I might have punctured it. See some he heme lymph. Uh. Blood. So this is the stem boring caterpillar larva of some kind that we just extracted from my Prudence Purple heirloom save seed tomato plant, which I'm now gonna attempt to patch up.
see if we can save the plant here. So now I'm just going to take this tomato tape, like I said, and try to repair this so that it heals together. And then I'm going to water it and hopefully the plant will take up enough moisture overnight um, to maintain turgidity. I'll probably just take this shoot off here. So it'll actually patch itself back together? I mean, I hope it will. There's no guarantee. This was definitely a risk, but um, there is a couple things working in our favor. One is that I noticed the signs of the pest before I noticed the symptoms in the plant. So what I mean by that is the sign of the pest included that frass, the excrement that we saw um, coming out of the borehole, as well as what I think were the breathing tubes. Um, those tiny, tiny pinprick holes that I pointed out along the stem of the tomato as that borer moved up the stem, which is their tendency, they're moving up away from their waist. Um, they, they bore new snorkels or breathing holes through to the uh, outside of the stem. Got so it. those were the signs that there was a potential pest present. Um, typically speaking with a borer, because what they're doing inside the stem is digesting all of that good plant tissue, you're going to eventually see symptoms like wilting. Um, we don't have that yet with this Prudence Purple, and I'm hoping that means that we caught this early enough that the plant will be able to make a full recovery and give us lots of wonderful, large, uh, pink-colored, pink-fleshed tomatoes. Um, so I'm just kind of painstakingly wrapping this tomato tape around the stem where I sliced it open. Um, if there's any, if uh, you don't have tomato tape, can you use something else? Um, I mean, it's almost like grafting. So if you know anything about grafting soft tissues of plants, some of the things you can use are twisty ties with saran wrap. Um, uh, make a little bed or sponge of something like peat moss or I considered using some loofah that we grew from last year to try to retain moisture. But since this isn't really a graft site, it's just a site that I want to heal, I'm just trying to bind it um, as tightly as possible to minimize moisture loss and to um, maintain contact between plant tissue so that it kind of heals back together make this easier on myself and the plant. I'm going to trim this. I'll just trim another length if we need to. But yeah, I'm basically almost like making a plaster of Paris cast, just yeah. going around and around um, and adhering the tomato tape to itself around this wound that I created in the plant to extract that stem borer. Cool. The idea being, yeah, to keep the plant tissue in contact with itself and to retain moisture. Do another couple of inches there. And then I'm going to water it, let it soak up a lot of water overnight. And um, I will say, potentially the one symptom I noticed is that this plant has set fruit, but they really haven't grown very much since I noticed them first setting. So um, that's a potential sign that it was just basically nutrient deprived by the um, stem borer, which was kind of sucking all the good juice out of the stem tissue, um, and mm. potentially intercepting nutrients as they came up from the root system. But there we go. That is a liberated tomato plant, liberated from its... I feel like we should write things on the cast. <laughs> Get well soon, tomato. <laughs> Fruit ends forever. I'll give it a bunch of water here. But that's it. So uh, part of integrated pest management, as well as part of permaculture, is the idea of observing and interacting with your plants. Um, so again, I was kind of peeking under the leaves here of this tomato plant to check on the fruit set, uh, which is over here. and. At the same time that I noticed that these fruits really aren't growing at all, I started to see the frass there at the bottom of the stem. I saw the entry point, um, and then I was seeing those pinprick holes, which are potential breathing holes. Uh, so those were the signs that I noticed that I thought, let me take the risk of slicing open the stem, see what's in there, 
um, because frankly if you let that develop to the point where you're seeing those wilting symptoms in the plant, your tomato plant's basically dead. Um, so last year that happened, uh, the fruit was much larger, that was I believe on a big rainbow, and I saved the plant basically in time to let the fruit ripen, but it never set any additional fruit. Um, so again, it's early enough in the season where I hope this plant will make a full recovery. Can and you use we'll the see. same process for squash vine borer? Absolutely. The advantage that you have with squash vine is because they're um, running along the ground. One of the recommended ways of healing a cut stem like that is to actually bury it in soil because mm. it's either going to heal or it's going to put out additional roots, whatever you know is most advantageous to the plant. Obviously with a vertical tomato plant, um, I'm not going to pile dirt that high. I guess I could if I wanted to. It'd be a lot of dirt. So um, the cast method is kind of the next best thing. Cool. Well, congratulations on your successful operation. Yes. I'm going to try to dispose of this with the checks. What do you think? Oh, wow. Wow. That was fast. Oh, hopefully oh, you can see it squirming. Looks yep. like I might have punctured it. See some hemolymph. Uh, 